Hello, 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 listeners. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Listening. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. Hello, everybody. Is everybody in a really good mood now? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve Podcast. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. My name is Jimmy Putnam, your host. And with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And Will Doherty. A vote for Will Doherty is a vote for <laughs> Will Doherty. We, we, we are deep into Sidekick 2015, the race to become Jimmy's sidekick. For those of you who have not listened to the last few episodes, Will Doherty and Joshua Vossler are neck and neck in their race to be promoted from co-host of the podcast to sidekick. So, Dan, you will have a vote as well whenever you like. We are joined today by our special guest, Dan Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. Yay! 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 That's a <laughs> guest welcome. How's it going, Dan? It's going great, man. All right, Dan. Uh, the theme of today's show is beer. Dan brews his own beer. We're going to do some beer tasting later. He also plays bass in a ska band and does comedy. Basically, anything you can do in a bar. Is that right? Is that about, yeah. I was, got it? Uh, I was actually born in a bar. <laughs> Fantastic. Some people uh, <laughs> just have it all lucky, and some, I guess. <laughs> and someday you'll die in one. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everyone. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes and tell a friend to subscribe on iTunes. Leave us some positive feedback. Click five stars. It really helps the show. Sidekick 2015. We have a couple of call-in votes that I was going to play to start off the show before we really get deep inside Dan Vaughn. So It's what we all want. <laughs> it's what everybody wants. It's what they're here for. I've got two call-in votes. Right now, the votes stand at three to two in favor of Will Doherty. So uh, we'll see who these... The, the sense of disbelief in your uh, <laughs> voice. You, it, it was the look in your eyes. Like, as you were, you were, you were like, please stay Will! Please stay Will! Almost. The, the, uh, the way this was going, I was up two to zero. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to take this home. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So I thought about doing my own, like, video vote. Oh. And then just, like, throw a will a pity vote. But I'm super <laughs> glad I did because now I'm down by one. The vote, And, in fact, the vote actually stands three to two to one because David Kalsgaard voted for my cat. Uh, <laughs> so so here, here's the first call-in vote we have. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, it's me, uh, local comedy legend, Dusty Stell. Uh, I'm just calling in to uh, go ahead and give my vote for sidekick. I, I don't even know why this is even close, but... Will Doherty is by far better than Joshua Bosler on this podcast, <laughs> so this is quite obvious to me. I'm, I'm voting for Will Doherty, sidekick, plus he just he just needs it more. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the guy lately? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> all right, well, uh, Jimmy, that's uh, all I have for now. Um, hey, everybody, keep downloading that episode I was on. Let's, uh, that was the first guest on the podcast. It's the most downloaded episode that had a guest on it, and rightfully so, because I'm, I, I, I deserve that. Anyway, uh, good luck to you, Will. I hope you win Sidekick. You know, because I, I, I just like to see you smile. <laughs> you're, not wild. Just, you're not such a bummer. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. So, well, that's one vote for Will. It stands uh, right now four to two in favor of Will, and uh, we have our second call-in vote. Hello, Jimmy and the Jimmy Carr program. It's me, Sebastian Schroeder, international podcast critic. Oh. I'm just calling you, so thank you for honoring me with the award for best call-in segment on your program. I'm so dearly and so so honored to, to win such a prestigious award. I can email you my address if you'd like to ship my award to me, or perhaps just send me one of your free t-shirts. I also understand that you are currently doing a vote for best sidekick. Uh, someone's going to be promoted to sidekick, and the other one will just be a measly co-host. <laughs> so I would like to place my vote. I'm sure this will be no surprise, but I'm going to vote for Joshua Wassler. <laughs> I don't know how, how highly I think of him. He's just so delightful. He's such a kind, kind soul. I, I very much adore him. Uh, plus... 
plus William was kind of a dick when I called in <laughs> a while ago. So anyway, best of luck to you all with the Jimmy Curve and Jimmy Curve program. Uh, <laughs> and that's one vote for Joshua from uh, international, fan. Yeah, international podcast critic Sebastian Schroeder, all the way from uh, Germany. So the vote currently stands uh, four to three in favor of Will Doherty. We'll get our guest Dan Vaughn's vote sometime before the end of the show. You can vote now or you can uh, use the show to make up your mind. I'm really into tiebreakers. So... <laughs> Hey, okay. I'll all right. Going to Jay Voss over here. I'll take That's it. That's one vote for Joshua Vossler. Then <laughs> it is all tied up four to four. I did say that we would be finalizing this on April Fool's Day, but we're going to keep the ballots open for another week. So uh, we're going to have a podcast that uh, we record a week from today, April sixth, and that'll close the voting. So then, when our show drops on April 9th, we will then reveal the winner of Sidekick 2015. <laughs> Is it like one of those, like, is it like American Idol or uh, some sort of uh, survivor show where I have to sign something to not reveal who the actual <laughs> winner is? There, there, there will be a three-day period where you will be asked to keep your lips tight, Got tightly it. sealed. Uh, but uh, thank, thank you for your votes. <laughs> so let's, let's get to it. Let's get into it. Dan Vaughn, you brew your own beer and you've brought us some today. Yeah. So beer is going to be the theme of the show. I love beer. Will you? Not so much. Beer is the worst. <laughs> you don't... It's, it tastes terrible. Anything that you have to learn to like like that much, it's not good. It's just a bad thing that a lot of sad people need. <laughs> I, I've been learning to like you a lot, Will. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And Will he makes you sad. And you're also wrong. <laughs> uh, Joshua Vossler, you do like beer, but can't have much of it. I, uh, I love beer. Uh, I decided, though, for the sake of the show, for the good of the show, I am lifting uh, my diet for the show and uh, consuming uh, probably a lot of carbohydrates. Fantastic. And, Will, you're also going to be tasting this beer for the good of the show. I am. All right. Well, cool. I, uh, hope, I hope, as your future sidekick... You appreciate the sacrifices that I make for this program. <laughs> I do, and I just want to say, I have not tasted this first beer yet of Dan Vaughn's. We're going to have him describe it, and then we're going to take a sip and see what it's like. I just want to say, in the grand tradition of uh, guests of the Jimmy Curve bringing us gifts, Dan is now solidly in first place. <laughs> yes. Um, Annie brought us Silly String. And, uh, boner Dan, pills. And Dan Schmidt and Chris <laughs> Dryden brought us gas station boner pills. <laughs> but so far, Dan, you're winning. So, uh, what is this? What's this first beer that we're going to try? Um, this beer is a, uh, session lager, uh, very similar to Anchor Steam, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, the way it's brewed is, uh, it's like most lagers have to be in a very cold, um, environment, usually around 60 degrees or so. And, uh, this one is, um, was actually conceived, the recipe was conceived in, uh, uh, California, where they use the winds from the ocean to actually cool the beer, uh, uh, before they bottled it and that kind of stuff. So, uh, it's, it's got, um, some yeast in there that's from California and, um, it's got almost like a, a, a peachy taste to the lager. Cool. All right. I'm going to have a sip and I'm going to see what I think. I just took a sip. It's, yeah. it's very good. I noticed when you were pouring it, you're very concerned about the clarity, you know. I don't know enough about brewing beer. Just drinking what, it. What What are you looking for now? You You have You've had um, beers entered into contests, yeah. so like they've been judged. What are judges uh, with this one's like particularly like? What would a j beer judge be looking for? It really has to do uh, with the clarity in the uh, um, in the head. It's mostly just for show. Uh, kind of like you know a pedigree type of thing. That's that's the that's the paint job, right? Right. Okay. And then the uh, the the taste obviously uh, it basically the more it tastes like it's supposed to, mm -hmm. it's the more they judge you on like how great it is. So, so this is called a session lager, and there is a there is what a, a beer judge would say is a session lager taste that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, and and it, it really depends on like how you describe your beer. There's times where like people be like I have pineapple and uh, maybe some other roasted malts in here, uh, and they will be looking for those. Uh, so they want it to taste um, 
like you say it's supposed to and they want to uh also just enjoy the taste in general because sometimes people can brew beers and like oh this doesn't taste very good but it tastes like it's supposed to so (laughs) right i like this a lot i don't know what a session lager is supposed to taste like but i like good beer and i like this one i I like it talking about the clarity one time i was at uh yaya's you know they got different beers from all over the huge beer menu and uh I, I bought this like thirteen dollar bottle of beer. It's from Belgium. Whatever. I didn't know what it. You know, I don't know. <laughs> right. And I and so I they I poured it in the glass, and that it just didn't look filtered at all. Like yeah. it had stuff like floating, like floating <laughs> around in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just imagine some like old Belgian guy like. Making the beer in his bathtub. <laughs> his like, <laughs> finger was floating in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like washing his shirt in the, in the <laughs> brew. He, shoveling things of stuff yeah. into and, it. Uh, and as long as as long as you said that before it went for the judge is like, look for hints of old shirt. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, well, uh, they, that's what they told me I was looking for. Uh, it, it, it was like the highest like alcohol content beer. Sure, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it was... A lot of the times those will be just like, hey, let's throw like a ton of malt, yeast, and hops into something and just get it as alcohol as we can. Well, and sometimes they're really sweet, right? Like sure. sugar is one of the things that holds alcohol. Sug- uh, the yeast eats the sugar mostly. Oh, okay. And... and uh, Basically, the the yeast eats the sugar, uh, poops out alcohol. Is mm-hmm. how I like to explain it to people. Yeah. And uh, delicious. Yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> uh, and so there's there's times where you have to sacrifice flavor for for alcohol if that's what your intent is. It's weird that like you will you don't like beer because as far as I know you'll eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what how, what do you think of this one, Will? It makes me scrunch my face less than most beers have. <laughs> That's the best judging I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, less face it's, scrunchy. It still tastes like poison. I'm going to say that this is a good beer. I'm going to give you a... Boom. Nailed it. As my yes. official... So you, you brew different kinds of beers, right? Right. So um, where is this on the scale of your what you would consider to be your perfection? I'd say this is probably the third best one I've brewed. I brew with a buddy of mine, Will Notbohm. Uh, he lives, uh, he's been my, my roommate in like all through college and, 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 uh, got like five or six years and, uh, he, we don't live together anymore, but like he always comes over and we'll brew beers together. He actually got me into it. We make the recipes together. So we, we both like split half the profit. Uh, yet no one saw those quotes. I just did. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically I, I, we just I do split visual beer gags on the yeah. podcast all the time. It's okay. And, uh, and it's just, so we, we'll make them together. So I, I think this one is probably our third best that we've made. We, what, what we strive for on this one was a very drinkable beer, uh, that we could make, uh, for relatively cheap. It's never cheap to make your own beers as much as people think that it is, mm-hmm. uh, cause you're always buying new stuff. Like you can never have enough stuff to brew with. Can I, can I ask you a question about that statement? The, the term, a very drinkable beer. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? And I, I ask this because I used to, like, years and years ago, I did a joke when, like, the Bud Light Lime had, like, the big ad campaign going around that said, like, superior drinkability was their slogan. And so I was doing a joke at that time about how, like, they're advertising that their beer is a fluid. That's the only <laughs> attribute that they're proud enough mm-hmm. to advertise. Like, what is that? What, so what is that? statement actually means so a drinkable beer is um it's it's a beer that you could pretty much drink all night so it's something that you're never going to get tired of it, you'll never uh it, it, like you won't be satiated after one i mean you could be but it, you won't necessarily will be and uh so wh- what it really comes down to is like okay this is unoffensive to most people and i mean you excluded, but, <laughs> uh, but like a lot of people, like when we first, uh, finished this beer and bottled it, we're like, okay, we'll have like one or two and then like, you know, finish, you know, whatever we were doing. And we drank like a six pack a piece and then passed out. So <laughs> like, it was just like, it's, it's a lower alcohol content. It's very, uh, uh, crisp. It's pretty mild flavors that everyone seems to enjoy. So that's what I mean by very so it's, drinkable. It'd be, the, not, it'd be the opposite of something like a really strong IPA right, that or, is going to turn a lot of people off unless you're into that. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, 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 I'm a hop head. Like that's what, that's my thing. Oh, me too. Yeah. IPAs. But like, it's not for everybody. You would not say like, a person who's never had a craft beer, if you gave them like a double IPA, it would, it would melt their face off. Yeah, they'd uh, probably die. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, well, then based based on that description, then my my review of it makes me scrunch up my face less than most was actually a super positive review. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what he was going for. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's go get another beer. Cool. Will and Josh, give us some uh, transition going to get another beer music. I do that, 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 do, 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 got some beer, work it's a, went upstairs, got some beer, now we're downstairs, gonna talk about some beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dan, what are we drinking now? So what we're drinking here is a vanilla, either porter or stout. It's weird, it's up for debate, but what it is, is uh, it's it's a beer that I, I wrote the recipe mostly, and it's, it's called Hella Vanilla. <laughs> awesome because why not yeah. and uh and check that box <laughs> and uh this one actually won third place in uh in a brewing competition that I, that we put it in uh, yeah man uh the weird thing about it is like the w- the way how porters and stouts work it's based mostly on the like alcohol percentage and this is like right in between where they'd both be so it's very dark and and so it has elements of porter and stout to it and it's not sweet when you said vanilla porter i thought it was going to be a sweet beer cuz i don't like sweet beers technically it is a sweet it's pretty sweet to me but yeah. i don't i don't consume I, sugar and <laughs> right i don't yeah i don't like i don't that candy I wouldn't bar call guy this sweet. like it <laughs> yeah. like it wouldn't i wouldn't call this sweet like compared to a lot of beers i have that just taste like sugar it tastes like sure. mead you yeah. know this is nice. This is much better. Uh, I'm going to be burping a lot on this show because I'm <laughs> drinking beer really fast, but uh, I'm enjoying it. So, uh, yeah, this is good. I, I, I wanted to ask you this question. So, I, w- I was just talking about this last night. There have been, in my life, more than 10 times, I believe, where I've gone to a bar and ordered some kind of craft beer uh, that was on tap. You know, some sure. kind of either Sierra Nevada or like this. I feel like this happens with fat tire a lot. I've gotten a drink. I've, I've gotten a beer. I've taken a sip. Will, are you going to throw up? <laughs> if look, if I am, just let it happen. It's going to be some good pot. <laughs> don't 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 drink any more of that. Dude. <laughs> like, you look fucking you're like you look like in pain. Oh, anything like, I can like, do to help. Like more so than just like the base. The normal, line. yeah, yeah. Don't drink that. It's gonna, it's gonna be <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry if you not. That's what. I, if there's something that's in my hand or in front of me, I'm going to compulsively consume it <laughs> until it's gone. So, anyways, like I've ordered like a craft beer to bar, gotten it, taken a sip, and it's been bad, right? Beer. Like rotten. Yeah. And then I look to my left and I look to my right, and there's just people drinking it. Like, can people not tell? I, 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 there are a couple things that I think might be happening. Number one, I think it's hard for people to tell. Like, I have a really yeah. sensitive palate to that, maybe. Uh, number two, I think people just don't, when people order a craft beer, they just like, my guess that's what it tastes like. Yeah. I mean, well, well, it's not that people can't tell. It's usually just like, don't care. I, yeah. I think you drink enough. You really don't know what you're like. You can't yeah. really taste what you're drinking. I have never in my entire life been so drunk that that when, when you take when you when I taste a beer that's gone bad, like a keg that's just been sitting in a bar for too long, it's terrible. Like I've never oh, yeah. been so drunk I didn't care about it. It's like it's hard. It's like to me, it's the same thing as like you know when you buy deli meat and it goes bad and you open the bag and you take that first whiff and it's like. It just knocks you on your ass. It's so horrible. Yeah, it doesn't stop me from eating it, though. Really? <laughs> like rotten meat? Oh, it's the worst, uh, man. No, I know, I know what you're saying. Or sour milk? Like, sour milk is bad, too. I don't know if, like, when when beer turns, like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm so... Like, for example, Mary can't tell. Yeah. Like, it, she doesn't... She just... It just can't taste it. But to me, I'm instantly like, okay, this is bad. But I feel like people don't know. It's it's a combination of a couple of things. I Do think. I have a superpower? Well, maybe. Yes! Uh, you're just well, really sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not it. Oh, well, I mean... You know, I just G- like beer. You know Jimmy and all his sophistication. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, thing, the thing that you were just describing, like... We yeah, like where you said like I've never been so drunk that I didn't notice. I've never been so drunk that I could just drink a beer. <laughs> right. So right, but that's the same thing I'm saying. Like you're saying to me. No, but you're saying the same thing, which yeah. is that like taste is taste, and that doesn't go away when you get drunk. 
when I get drunk, I can still taste what I'm consuming. If I'm like stumbly around, like pass out drunk, I'm probably not at a bar ordering craft beers. Yeah, well, there's there's uh, some things that go into that. Um, your palate gets adjusted to what you're drinking. So if if you are drinking like a stout like this, and then you go to an IPA, it's going to be a range of different flavors going in your mouth. If you don't have a palate cleanser, you're going to be like, this is weird. Uh, but you know, this is probably good. Cause I just had a, a totally different beer. Right. But like with some people, people like where it's obviously turned or like the lead or the, the lines haven't been bled in a while. So they're just gross and full of mold. Probably that goes to where they either don't know, or they don't care. Or they do know and they do care, but they don't want to raise a fuss, which is what I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> right. See, I, I, I have no problem. Because, see, it, it makes me mad that they're serving me something that's bad. And I'm like, hey, this, you guys got to change this, this cake. Like, this, this beer is sure, it's terrible. Yeah. And, and bartenders know, you know, when you say smell this, they can tell pretty quickly. But, like, yeah. most bartenders, they're just, they're pouring drinks so fast, <laughs> they, they don't have time to, like, stop and smell, like, everything or, like. You know, I don't taste. I, I like this a lot. It's a lot more intense than the last one. Oh, thanks. I like really <laughs> like just a salt on my in my mouth. All right, that's not bad. Like the salt on my palate. Like you ever Guess had who that? Just got a new drop. That Rasputin. <laughs> that Rasputin. Oh yeah, beer? yeah, yeah. That's pretty intense. It's good. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a uh, something evil. Um, certified evil. Certified evil. That mm -hmm. stuff. It's probably mm -hmm. my that's, all time. That's the only thing I like. Uh, all time favorite from beers. Lucky Bucket. Hey, I'm not here to judge. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe I am. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lucky Bucket is... I'm I, not a fan. Me neither. Uh, their lager is a lager. Their IPA is an IPA. That Certified and Evil, though. That Certified Evil That's, is great. great. I do like the Certified Evil as well. Let me ask you this, Dan. All-time favorite beer. And you can give me a top three if you want, other than things you have made yourself. Okay. I have to say all-time favorite beer, La Folie by New Belgium. Look it up, everybody. It's a sour uh, brown ale. Okay. And what that means is they make a brown ale and then literally let it sour for three years. Sorry, I thought you said waffle. I was like, Will might like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I wouldn't put Sorry it past some people <laughs> to actually make a waffle beer, but yeah. they, make, they make beers into, or anything into beers these yeah, days. Yeah. My all-time favorite beer is Odell IPA. I Odell makes a very good IPA. solid IPA. Like yeah. every, actually, everything Odell makes, I think, is a great brew. Company. The, the thing about sour beers, though, is that they like with this with this stout porter, whatever it is that we're drinking right now, mm -hmm. um, award winning. Is, oh yeah, that's what everyone keeps telling me. <laughs> <laughs> third, third place is technically an award, guys. I got a free T-shirt out of it. Uh, oh, <laughs> but when it with, with like. The sour, like this one, you can drink like one, and then you're good. You don't have to drink yeah. more than that. Yeah. But with a sour, the sour beer, you can drink like half, and you'll be good. It's a delicious beer, mm -hmm. but you don't need to drink any more than like half a beer out of mm -hmm. it. And it comes in like a like a bomber, like a 22 ounce, so you can yeah. share with a couple people. And and it's it tastes like almost like someone put Sour Patch Kids in, in brown ale. <laughs> I love it, but like people are just like, I don't like it. I was like, well, I'll fuck it, I'll drink it. Yeah, it's it is it, there. There are certainly things that are good in the beer world that you can't chug you know like there's yeah. a, a a company called mckeller that makes a black double ipa that i really like but you you ha it's it's a sipping beer sure like you wouldn't even want to take a big swig of it because it'll just yeah it, it doesn't go down um my my actually my all-time favorite beer is uh a dogfish head 120 minute ipa which is amazing have you ever had Dogfish Head? Yeah. You can't get it in Nebraska, which pisses me off, but it's such a good, oh, it's such a good yeah. beer. Um, I had this funny experience. So they make, they make a 60 minute IPA and a 90 minute IPA. And then like once a year, they brew like four barrels of this 120 minute IPA. Uh, and you just can't get it everywhere. But <laughs> Mary and I were in Washington, DC, just, uh, just on vacation and we were like, Let's go get some, you know what we should do? We, we got a, the, 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 uh, whirlpool suite at the hotel and we were like, we're going to get some beer and some pizza and just hang out in the hot tub. Like, that's what we're going to do tonight. It's only the best vacation ever. It is. And so we went to the liquor store. <laughs> but, but we have to do it in a historic city or <laughs> else it doesn't count. Oh, we walked around and looked at monuments for like 
a half an hour first. It was great or whatever. But then we went to the hot tub. So <laughs> we, went, an hour. we went. We went. Uh, so we go to this. Enough week. time for you, Lincoln. We go to this. We well, you go, know how you know how Jimmy likes history. <laughs> <laughs> we go to this liquor store, and uh, I grabbed a four pack of the Dogfish Head ninety minute IPA. And I go up to the counter, and like the guy working there was like Rob Schneider's Saturday Night Live, you like the juice character. And he goes, uh, he looks at what I've got, and he's like, you like a dogfish head IPA, huh? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, you want to see something cool? <laughs> and I was like, and then he showed you his dick. There's not a great response to that, but I was like, okay. <clears throat> and then he like runs into the back and he comes out with his 120 minute IPA and he's like, you're going to like this one. <laughs> and so it was like 10 bucks a bottle, but it was amazing. Oh yeah. Sometimes you got to pay for some good, some really good beer yeah. and for some other things, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> true. Let me ask you another question, uh, Dan Vaughn, because the other thing, I, I know you for, uh, two things primarily. One is comedy and the other is, uh, music. Yeah. So you do, first of all, let's just get this out of the way really quick. How'd you get started doing stand up? Uh, do you want the real answer? Yeah, you can say Bob Garnett's name. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I've known Bob Garnett, um, local, not a legend local guy who just moved away former no. local guy former local guy and uh i've known him for maybe about five or six years and uh, he was always doing stand-up shows and i've I got a couple a couple of his and i saw some people like i'm funnier than them i'm funnier than bob even and uh so i i, I went to a <laughs> i went to an open mic it was the legends open mic um uh when they used to do it on mondays and and I was like, I got this. I've been on stage a million times in the band. Uh, I'm super funny and witty all the time. Uh, I'm adorable. Like I got every all the stuff going for me. And and I get up there and I just start like I've never had a panic attack in my life. I'm just like, <gasps> I'm not funny. Yeah, it's where's the, worst. the band to back me up? I need a rim shot quick. Uh, and uh, so I got up there and, and like I just I just bombed and like you know it's like your first time you like you say some risque stuff that you really probably shouldn't say and like uh, and I and I didn't <laughs> I I really didn't feel like I did that great. Right. And, uh, and, but everyone was super, uh, encouraging. And, uh, Ryan De La Garza comes up to me and goes, Hey, man, I like that you're getting up there and doing some stuff. And we got on the next battle. I was like, Battle who? <laughs> like, I was like, with swords. And he's like, No, it's a comedy thing. And like, I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get into that. And then like, I just did like four or five open mics. And everyone was so nice and so supportive, uh, that I just kept doing it. And, uh, my, I was going to stop when I got funnier than Bob. But that was a long time ago. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I wanted to ask you that because you would be the second uh, consecutive guest. Like when we asked Mike Vamosi that question, he just he just said directly, "I blame Bob." Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all do. Anyways, uh, so the other thing I know you for is playing bass in a ska band. Uh, you play with a band called the Bishops. By the way, I'm sorry. I just you guys just had a 20th anniversary show. I was yeah. gonna go. My wife has like been sick for a week, so we I I felt like it would be bad if I left her here and like <laughs> went to a concert. So you know, I it's it's cool. There. Like we know who our fans are, and like so if if some of our fans can't make it, we're not bummed about it. Like, <laughs> right. like it's like you've been to plenty of our shows. You're like, oh, you didn't make it to our twentieth. Uh, <laughs> right. Fuck you. You know, it's it's fine with us. It looked like it looked like that show was pretty was was the bomb. It looked like it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna go one further and say it was the bomb dot com. It was the bomb dot com. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's that kind of witty banter that's propelled <laughs> propelled into success in the stand up. <laughs> uh, so uh, you, I, I've known, I've actually known your band longer than I've known you. Like I feel yeah. like I've known Mike for fifteen years, uh, yeah. who plays guitar and uh, uh, trombone, trombone, and sings. Yeah. And sings. Um, check out the Bishops, by the way. Good stuff. I'm gonna play one of your songs at the end of this show. Yeah. Uh, it is, you guys have actually played it a, a couple times, our tunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, so um, you're not expecting a royalty check because I don't know if you know this. Do you know but, any royalty? I don't. <laughs> pod, podcasts are nonprofit oh. uh, at this level. Is it, um, is it nonprofit or not for profit? 
Uh, it was like your beer, free. Wait. <laughs> what, what, I feel like one of those is a choice, and, and whatever we are is not that one. I feel like one of them is a trap. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> which is the one that doesn't involve helping people? <laughs> uh, yeah, we are. I think that's not for profit. Yeah, we are yeah. not for profit. So uh, how did you – I, I, I've known Mike for a long time. Before you were in the band, how did you get involved in that band? Um, well – the Bob Gurnett. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bishops, uh, obviously, we just had our 20th year anniversary. I did not start a ska band when I was nine years old. <laughs> so it's been around way before I was in the band. But um, around 1999, uh, they started in 95. And around 1999, uh, they took a 10-year hiatus. It's just like life came up. Members had to drop. Um, unfortunately, uh, a good friend of all the guys that were in the Bishops, uh, he died and his dream was that the bishops got back together and played like a, a big show and, and had like a huge crowd and that kind of stuff. So in honor of him, they, they got back together and they played a show. You all right there, buddy. Yeah. I'm trying not to burp into the microphone. <laughs> Go, just let it fly. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, such a poignant moment that I, yeah. I feel like I helped ruin. <laughs> it's like, this, and then he died. Ugh. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, I remember that show. I remember when that happened. It, was that? Were you? Did you play in that show? Were you hired for that show? No, okay. no. I um. So this was still before I even knew the bishops were a band. I I grew. I spent a lot of my time in Wyoming when I was growing up, so I didn't get a, a whole lot of the uh, the Cog Factory experience like a lot of people did. But uh, because of that show, they're like, well, let's 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 keep playing a few shows and see where this goes. And uh, uh, th there was a ska band that came to town called Westbound Train. Uh, uh, I think they're from New Jersey. And um, I've loved that band for a good four or five years before they came to town. Mm -hmm. And I just had a great time at the show. And there was a guy just out there handing out flyers. Like, who the fuck hands out flyers still? <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, it was Mike. And I was talking. And he's like, oh, we're in a ska band. We do, like, traditional ska and some two-tone stuff. And I was like, that's awesome. I'm going to come check you guys out. And uh, at the time, I was playing in a, a punk and ska band called the Super Colliders, uh, which their best song was a song called uh, Life is Like a Stairmaster. You're always going up, but you're not, never going anywhere. <laughs> Uh, and it, the whole lyrics to the songs is I like drinking beer all day over and over and over. Uh, so that was, that was the kind of talent I brought to the bishops when they asked me to fill in for their bass player. And, uh, luckily I got a lot better, um, over the years, but, uh, it was just kind of like a, like a, I got tossed into the, into the fire and I was forged into the man I am today. Fantastic. Josh, your wife is here. Yep. That just happened. <laughs> <laughs> How was the food? How was Florio's? Yeah. All right. I bet. Are you guys like sponsored by Florio's or anything? No, it's just <laughs> really good and I keep talking about it. Like I said, you, you don't understand, Dan. Like I, I, when I said that like as soon as I finish a meal, I start looking forward to my next one, I wasn't joking. <laughs> I think about food kind of all the time. My wife and Josh's wife has been have been out at dinner at my favorite restaurant while we were recording this podcast. <laughs> And I, I really wish I was with them and not you guys. What, hey, hey, Josh. <laughs> not me. I wish I was here doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh. What do you think they talked about? Um, I don't know. Probably like books. <laughs> <laughs> My wife just walked in the room holding two books, so there's a good chance they're <laughs> talking about books. Uh, so, what is coming up for the bishops? We have quite a bit on our plate right now. Um, while we just, just had our 20-year anniversary, our guitarist is also leaving the band. John Green. John Green. Good dude. He's a great guy. And so, like, we're in the process of getting a new guitarist. Do you have someone in mind? We have uh, auditioned a few people. Cool. So what, what's coming up for the Bishops? Um, besides all the guitar stuff, we have um, a show in Springfield, Kansas, uh, with the Slackers, um, one of my Slackers favorite, are one of my favorite bands. Dude, they're so great. Slackers wrote a song that made me cry. Which one? Uh, what went wrong? Uh, uh, I thought there was like a cover of "You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings." <laughs> 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 they do a cover of "Like a Virgin," which is similar. 
I so I fucking weird. love the slackers. Like Rude and Reckless is okay. one of my all time favorite it's songs. A good song. <laughs> yeah, there's so many good songs. The whole album, the question. I like how the like Josh and Will are just like, what's what's going on right now? <laughs> Correct. The, the slackers are the best. Yeah. Uh, I love playing with those guys. Uh I love seeing them. They always have like the best stage presence. They have the best uh songs and they have the best attitude. They're always just there to have a good time and make sure everyone else does. Something too. about Will, uh, are you gonna drink that beer? <laughs> something about Good, the, it's nice and warm now <laughs> something about that guy's voice i think his name is vic ruggiero ruggiero that guy's yeah. that guy's voice is so, like it's not what you would class he's got that think of nasally a if, if you have a talk to him he talks so like great. this he, you know he's like hey how's it going buddy what do you want to talk about the new york guys yeah yeah you know but like man when that guy sings like he just ah amazing Anyways, yeah yeah uh i'm mooning over a dude you know what we should do we should go get another beer and then do some news Okay, so what we've got now is an Imperian Scottish Ale from mm. <laughs> from uh, Laszlo's, which is a local brewery, and uh, we're drinking that. It is very delicious, and it is perfect. Uh, that does that is not the consensus opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. But it, it it is going to be our news beer, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua Fossler News. Hello, everybody. News, News from, the, from future. the future. Date, September 30th, year 2015. Comedy Central has decided to cancel The Daily Show. Is that possible? Yeah, it's my prediction. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, oh, wait, right, because they got a new host that no one's heard host. of. Yeah, the new host of The Daily Show was announced today. Trevor Noah will be replacing Jon Stewart as the host of the popular Comedy Central show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Noah's first appearance on the show was in December, and the 31-year-old has uh, appeared just two other times since. Other than that, Noah was on a late-night show in South Africa. Uh, at this time, <laughs> the the uh, transition of the host is still up in the air. I, uh, I I haven't watched The Daily Show like in kind of a long time. Have you guys seen this guy? No. I, I yeah, I've seen him. He's I, really funny. Yeah, I I, uh, I, I I YouTubed him. I like I saw a stand up, but yeah, I thought it was a different choice. He's, well, he's I, if it comes down to like him or like bringing Craig Kilborn back, like we're on board with this guy. But I, I, <laughs> I like I feel like there are other Daily Show correspondents that maybe should have had a shot. Maybe they didn't want to. I don't know. And I'm predicting it's not going to go well but i i'm not hating on him i just think after john stewart and what he's done with that show I, it kind of surprised me they picked this guy that's well, all i'm saying very, he's, he's yeah. funny he's funny i'm not saying he's not funny but you know he, he has kind of a, had a very short ten like he like i said he's been he's he was hired like as a uh contributor and then he appeared on three episodes well it's not the daily show it's the john stewart show the daily show format has nothing to do with its popularity if it did right. craig kilborn would have never left like John Stewart made that extraordinarily popular. Like it's the John Stewart show. Yeah. So no matter who they get to replace him, you're not. They're not going to last based on just we'll put another comedian in this chair and keep doing the Daily Show thing. Like you're banking on a guy making a new original product with the same title. And I got I got a thing with accents. I don't know John Oliver. I liked him. He's funny. I don't know about his accent. This guy's got a. <laughs> this guy's got an accent. <laughs> this guy's got an accent, and I don't know. It, Way it, to lose it, the brown audience. It affects me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, John Oliver's HBO show is the is the best thing ever. It's good. He's funny. last week tonight. Yeah, mm. I just think he'd be funnier. I'm if just he... saying, if you're gonna <laughs> come, if you're gonna come to this country and speak better English than I can, <laughs> do it in my dialect also. <laughs> Yeah, assimilate for God's sake. <laughs> Dan Vaughn, thoughts on accents? Uh, I was I was gonna say how how great it would be to have some peanuts right now with the beer. <laughs> That's it. I feel like the effect was wasted on you, Josh. Do you have another story? Most effects are. <laughs> Yesterday morning, uh, firefighters and sheriff's deputies responded to a 58 year old Michigan man after uh, it had been reported to 911 that he was having a stroke. After arriving on the scene, it was discovered that the man was not having a stroke, but was suffering from a reaction from eating what? Mm, uh, he was suffering from a, re a reaction from eating a venomous insect. Incorrect. Well, 
it can't be something that's obviously like people have allergies to, like peanuts, I assume. <laughs> it has to be something off the wall. I'm going to say uh, white bread. Dan Vaughn? It was a Michigan man? Yes. Yes. The Michelin man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say that because Michelin sounds like Michigan? Yeah, I'm a very simple-minded fellow. <laughs> and and people from Michigan tend to be white and roughly that shape. What, what, what is the answer? The correct answer is a pot brownie. Uh-huh. The man's 17-year-old daughter confessed to making the pot brownie the night before. That's uh, a cool daughter. This story, uh, <laughs> this story crazy, uh, raises a much larger question which is who eats brownies for breakfast? <laughs> oh, yeah, that, <laughs> that uh, I everyone sitting here. <laughs> it's like I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I've done that. <laughs> uh, brownies if are it, awesome. Uh, is it cool? Like as long as I just like take a brownie, just like smash it flat and stick it in my toaster for a couple of seconds, then does it count as a pop tart? <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I sometimes I look. I'll look at a. I'll get up in the morning and I'll see like the pan of brownies, and I'll just think to myself, I mean, it's kind of bread. <laughs> Wait, you wake up and there's still brownies? <laughs> Not often. I mean, I. Uh, oh man, it's more like I regain consciousness, <laughs> and there's just pans and crumbs everywhere. <laughs> Mary and I used to, there used to be a bread store uh, right down the street from us, and they had this- A bakery? (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you! Yeah, there was a bakery. It just came out of my nose with that one. There was a bakery. God damn it. There was a- (laughs) There was a place down the street, a bakery, that had really good brownie mix. We used to eat it. That was going to be the end of the story, but nah. Uh, I I have a, I, I saw a news story about that that I actually wanted to bring up. The uh, not about drugs, but it was since since uh, drinking is kind of the theme of our show. There was this story that was uh, posted to Break dot com where your first mistake is you cited a source. See, <laughs> that now what I do is I take out all the citations of my news story, so I can't be held accountable, and I can change it to uh, to make it a better story a little bit. Sometimes is that bad? <laughs> is that is that what a newsman is not supposed to do? A guy Humberto Mora Fonseca. Uh, There's no way that's a real name. (laughs) Probably not. Probably not. It's probably fake. Here, I'm going to highlight it for Dan Vaughn, who's going to look at it. Humberto. I forgot I can't read. (laughs) (laughs) He, uh, okay, so this guy at a party entered a drinking contest. He pulled back 25 shots of vodka in 60 seconds and then died. Uh, And what I liked about this article is that it said the reason is that you can't do 25 shots of vodka in 60 seconds. And I just, I, 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 I thought that story was. You, go, you, go you failed to mention something pretty important in this story. Go ahead. He won the contest. Oh, he. Go- <laughs> <laughs> hey, was, the, was the title of this news article Gone in 60 Seconds? <laughs> oh. Hey. <laughs> uh, it's, the title of the story is This Insane Drinking Contest Backfired Horribly. <laughs> <laughs> Which it did. Like, here, here, here's, I guess here is my question. Who thinks that they can drink 25 shots of vodka in 60 seconds. Well, no, I saw this story. Um, if I remember right, this story is from Russia, right? Uh, Brazil. Oh, Brazil. Pretty oh, close. Oh, okay. I was just, okay, I didn't, I must have just made that up because I thought I was, asso- <laughs> I was just associating vodka with Russia, I guess. Right. <laughs> Brazil. Uh, he is a Brazilian university student. Okay. Brazil has their own university. <laughs> Well, they've got one. I'm a, like, I I kind of understand, like, intellectually, I would think, like, that's probably a fatal amount of alcohol. But if there was a lot of people trying to make me do it, I would probably acquiesce. My roommate. Because I'm a weak, <laughs> sad person. In college, my roommate and I tried this thing one time where uh, we, my roommate Mike Tatro, we decided there was this this thing we had heard about where you do a shot of beer every minute power hour mm-hmm. right for an hour or something like that you do like one shot a minute uh and we were like or we were gonna our thing was like it was gonna be a hundred minutes i think 
Well, so we lined up these shots of beer and we looked at it with our feeble 21 year old brains and we thought like, this isn't going to even be a challenge. Like, why are we even bothering with this? So we were like, every 10th one will do whiskey. Like that'll at least, <laughs> <laughs> like that'll at least make it a challenge. And we were probably drunk already when we started. Like we'd probably been like, we weren't, you know, sober. This wasn't noon. Like when you decide to do something like this. So we start, we started on this contest. We do, you know, for, for nine minutes, we do shots of beer and then we do a shot of whiskey and we feel pretty good. It's like 10 minutes in and we're like, this isn't even going to be a big deal at all. Like we didn't do the math. We weren't like, that's drinking like five beers and five shots of whiskey in an hour, which, which is a lot of shit. So we get up into the twenties and we're starting to feel full and it, it surprises us because like we didn't see that coming. We're like, Oh my God. Like what? It's just a little ounce and a half shot of beer. How are we full? Like you can't put together that they add up and you're not just doing a shot at a time. And I think we copped out at about 32 when we both vomited. So that was my attempt at the uh, power hour. Uh, I, tr- I tried it once with a uh, Guinness. And I got to 10 minutes and I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make a red beer with Guinness once. It was horrible. I did. I did <laughs> it once. It was so bad. <laughs> I, I did once. Uh, I did once maintain the 24 hour buzz. I did achieve that successfully. Nice. That's where always you, a, a, a golden moment in your life. Where you stay, you stay intoxicated and a, awake for a full 24 consecutive hours. Jimmy, I have good. Well, I have good news. <laughs> uh, you don't have to get intoxicated. If you just stay awake for 24 hours, it's basically like being drunk. Right. Well, I'd, I I, mean, I'd been awake for eight hours or six hours or whatever before we even started drinking. But I was, I got hustled out of $100 shooting pool during that 24 hours. Like, I don't know. I, cause, I, oh, this is a crazy story. I was, I was like, I'm make, I'm, I'm doing the 24 hour buzz tonight. I got drunk. Everyone else crashed. I was still awake with just like one crazy friend. And I was drinking until the sun comes up uh, at his apartment. And about 7.30 or 8 in the morning, I'm just out on his porch. And I'm just, like, drinking or out on the, the deck of his apartment. And a guy walks out of the apartment next door. A guy none of us know. You know, he's just his neighbor. And he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, 24-hour buzz, man. And he's like, cool, you want to go shoot some pool? <laughs> which... which should have been a red flag. I mean, that was the worst. I, and I was like, yeah, let's go, man. And so, like, we, <laughs> he, uh, I just go with him to this bar and we start playing pool. And, I mean, I don't fucking know what happened. Like, he's just, like, I, you know, he, he did the classic hustler move where, like, I beat him the first game. I'm sure, you know, he wasn't even paying attention. And then he kicked my ass. He's like, now let's play for a hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And, like, I didn't even care. I was like, yep, here's a hundred bucks. <laughs> so, uh, don't do that. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I feel like we've, I feel like we've really handled the topic of alcohol consumption responsibly. Indeed. So congratulations, uh, Will. You had a couple of sips of beer. You're still alive. How do you feel? Um, better or worse than when you took those boner pills? <laughs> uh, better. Those boner pills were a fucking nightmare. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. the headache came on immediately, not like hours later when it's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a tragic decision you made. Joshua, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. I, um, I, uh, I want to thank Dan. Thanks for coming, man. You were one of the best, hey, one thanks, of the best man. guests we've ever had. And I'm not just Take saying that, that because you haven't voted yet for the uh, your he vote. He already for the... voted for you, didn't he? Yeah, he voted for you. Oh, you did. All right. Uh, I drank too much then. <laughs> my answer. You, can also, you can also thank me for that. <laughs> uh, Dan Vaughn, how do you feel? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing really, really great. Uh, it's it's been a lot of fun being on the on the show with you guys. Awesome, man. I feel pretty good. I feel like this is a good place to wrap it up. Uh, I'm gonna end the show with a song by your man, The Bishops. Do you have a uh, Do you have a request? Oh, you got a pick. Yeah, you can if you want. Otherwise, I'll just pick one. Let's do Black and Tan. Oh, I fucking love that song, man. Is that, is that on the CD I gave you? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to check right now. I'm going to check on the air. Get, uh, Josh and Will, give me some looking up a song music. Uh, any song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> music. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> looking up some music. Music. Looking up some music. Music. It's gotta be. All right, music. Got it. <laughs> uh, no, it is not on there. <laughs> I'll, get it. I'll get it. I'll get it to you. All right, man. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna do close. We, do you have any? Do we, we got anything to plug? Oh yeah, let's uh, let's do some plugs. It's your plug. What's coming up, Dan? You host a show called the Throwback Thursday Show, which I did and had a great time at. The fucking Styles dropped the ball on the PA system, yeah. but man, fucking, we still did a good show. It was a lot of fun that show. And don't worry, we're at the hideout now. Uh, it was literally the retooled Ryan De La Garza fronted hideout. Right. Um, and it was literally like that show happened that you were on mm-hmm. and everyone caught wind of it. And Ryan messaged me that night before I even got home. He's like, Hey, do it at the hideout now. I was like, yeah. Cool. Sounds awesome, man. I'm excited uh, to see it there. Yeah. So, um, tell us about that show. A little the, bit. Uh, it's what it is, is, uh, comedians give me, uh, photos from, uh, uh, their past, you know, it doesn't have to be like when they're kids, but, uh, it's, it's throwback Thursday. So, uh, anything that's like any, any photo that has to do with like their past at all, uh, they'll give it to me and I'll put it, uh, on a projector and then they'll click through the, th- through the pictures they give me and like tell jokes or stories or whatever they want to do, uh, to make people laugh. So it's pretty fun. Uh, I actually got a, uh, uh, a message from somebody uh, that said it was like the last show we did was like, Hey, when you're done with your gimmick show, is there still going to be an open mic? <laughs> and I go, no, <laughs> That's my so gimmick insulting. show will never be here again. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, but yeah, it's at the hideout, uh, April 16th. Uh, Goodwill Doherty will be there. Goodwill Good- Good- Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Goodwill Door. That's awesome. I don't know. It's an oxymoron. Oh, that's funny. Maybe not anymore yeah. after I said that. Po- possible- How do you like them apples? Po- <laughs> that's awesome. All uh, right, cool. Yeah. What else you got coming up? Um, I'll be on the the Floodwater Comedy uh, Fest in uh, Iowa City too. Oh wow, what is that? Uh, it's the Floodwater Comedy Fest in Iowa City. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's it's a new festival. It's mm. it's its first year, um, and it's it it, it has both uh, stand up and improv, and they're really uh, just trying to uh, just get some more comedy up in Iowa City. Believe it or not, Iowa City is a great place for comedy. I did Dana Palooza up there, and uh, and it was right. You're on a touring show with other guys named Dan called Dana Palooza. Yeah, uh, uh, well, not a touring show, a reoccurring show. Like what? I don't know. I don't I'm know. on it. I don't know what happens. This <laughs> sounds what, awesome. Yeah, it's. Uh, and, uh, so uh, yeah, that's up in Iowa city. And, uh, and I guess if we're talking about Dan and Palooza, there's another one in Lawrence, Kansas, uh, April 10th, but uh, my old stomping grounds. Yeah. That's where I went to college. Yeah. Where, where's the, where's the show there? Uh, do you know the venue? Uh, I should, but I don't, <laughs> I've played ska music in most of the venues there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't know where it is exactly, but all right, whatever. Uh, all of my friends who are listening to this, who still live around there, go check out Danapalooza in Lawrence, Kansas. Sounds cool. Will, Josh, what do you guys have coming up? Uh, at Joshua Vossler, I, uh, my wife, I believe your wife got to vote. Am I correct? <laughs> it's true. Uh, my wife hasn't voted yet. I'd like to go ahead and proxy her vote as Alicia. The, yeah. <laughs> here come, uh, hop on the mic here for a second and vote. The uh, the contest is who, which co-host will be promoted to Jimmy Curve's sidekick. Uh, if you, between Will and I, if you would like to cast a vote, the two contestants are Will Doherty and Joshua Vosser. And, t- and we're tied right now. I'm now, really now, tempted to vote for Will keep, just to piss off my husband. <laughs> keep in mind that if he if he does eventually get frustrated and leave the podcast, then you'll have so much more time to spend together. Uh, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> and the vote stands at five to four for Joshua Vosler. I really yeah. should have seen that coming. <laughs> <laughs> will, you are married. Do you think your wife would? Uh, call in a vote. She'll do what I tell her to do. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> no. What, what do you have coming up? Do you have anything coming up? Well, I'm gonna be on this uh, this weird can, gimmick can I show. Change my vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's been recorded. Like and you are. Uh, sorry, it's our. It's set in stone. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. What are you on? Uh, so I'm gonna be on this weird gimmick show called Throwback Thursday. <laughs> uh, that's all. <laughs> yeah, are you on anything coming up? I'm not. I'm on nothing. 
In a couple of weeks, I'm in some show in Giltner, Nebraska. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it, I don't know. Did you just make it? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did my circuit of uh, the local shows. I did my Throwback Thursday, my 140 character assassination. Uh, I did all the local uh, comedy shows in Omaha and Lincoln in like a two week stretch, and now I guess I'm done for 2015. <laughs> so, uh, when I'm on a show again in 2016, I'll let you guys know. Until then, let's let's do some sign offs. So for Dan Vaughn, our guest. Hey, I like to be ultra clever. <laughs> and uh, for my co-hosts and potential sidekicks, Will Doherty. I mean, you could vote for me. And Joshua Vossler. Or you couldn't vote for Will. <laughs> Dude. No, si- I mean, emotionally, you probably couldn't. Sidekick 2015 is hot and heavy. Get your votes in. Cast your votes. You, know, you don't have to vote for me. Just don't vote for Will. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Dan Vaughn in the running? <laughs> Do you want to be my sidekick? Oh, it, um, Yeah. <laughs> So uh, it's now a three man. It's now a four man ballot Here's between the thing. Joshua Vossler, Will Doherty, Dan Vaughn, and Jasper my cat. Oh, I'd like to vote for Dan then. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as my 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 platform will be. I will bring more beer. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh wow, well. that's that's sounds like a. We have a winner. It sounds like I'm, a crime, isn't it? <laughs> You're buying votes. I I will tell you what. I'm exactly where I want to be because I'm now because of that vote. Because of uh, that vote, I'm now one vote down. Correct. Which means that I'm going into this as the underdog. Mm. And uh, who doesn't want to vote for an underdog? Oh, okay. Uh, Very uh, fair. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. We've got one more week to cast your votes, everybody. Get them in. Uh, Email us at thejimmycurve at gmail.com. Post on our Facebook page, The Jimmy Curve. Leave some feedback for us on iTunes. As long as you click five stars, you can write whatever the fuck you want. I don't really don't care. That's a weird amount of freedom I'm giving you listeners. A weird amount of freedom. Uh, so thank you very much for listening to us. Rudy. <laughs> Rudy. Rudy. Under- a message to you, Rudy. <laughs> Under- underdog, also known as the most likely to be a loser. <laughs> Here is Black and Tan by the Bishops. Thank you and good night.
with your crew I got a little suggestion About the best brew The best brew for you Yeah, black and tan You know I'm 